we brought a few guests here this afternoon to talk a little bit about their view on the sacred tree and the environmental movement and how their faith traditions have informed their perspective. On behalf of Earth Keepers, I'm pleased to present to you our first speaker, Michael Grossman. Okay. <clears throat> I need the drummer back. <laughs> Can you come back? Yeah. And I need somebody with, uh, this won't take long, pretty good balance. Before I get into the environmental part of Judaism, I thought I should just introduce what Judaism is. And that's really impossible to do in 10 or 15 minutes. But over 2,000 years ago, a non-Jewish person came up to Rabbi Hillel, a very famous rabbi whose teachings we still aspire to. And he asked uh, Rabbi Hillel, he said, hey, we're going to do the skit now. And uh, you have okay. to, uh, this, when, when I tell you, you have to, that's what you have to say. Okay. okay. So he came up to Hillel, who studied Torah, the first five books of the uh, Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible, for years, has many disciples. And, um, okay, so I am the non-Jewish person now, and I'm coming, Rabbi Hillel, Rabbi Hillel, um, could you teach me the essence of Judaism by hopping on one foot, J dancing on one foot? Could you do that for me? All the other rabbis told me to get lost. But you, Great Hillel, could you do it for me? Would you do it? Yes. Okay. Um, and we have a drum roll here to okay. get you going, hopping on one foot. <laughs> so tell me, Hillel, what is the essence of Judaism? Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Yes. Now take this and go study. These are the scriptures. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's give her a hand. <laughs> So what have we learned about Judaism? Uh, there's a connection between ourselves and our neighbors, very, very important. Uh, study of Torah is also very essential in the, study in, uh, in the Jewish religion. Um, and also, I guess you could say humor, too, because he had to do this dancing on one foot. So what does this have to do with uh, Judaism and the environment? Uh, well, I'm getting to that. So we've talked about you know, the interrelationship of humans together, love thy neighbor as they self. As I know there's many Christians here. I believe Jesus said the same thing. It originally comes from Leviticus in the Old Testament. Um, so let's, let me just give you a, a, a rabbi's view about Jew, about a rabbi's view about ourselves and the earth. Two men were fighting over a piece of land and brought their dispute to a rabbi. After listening to each man's case, the rabbi put his ear to the ground. After a moment, he stood up and he said, The land says it belongs to neither of you. You belong to the land. So that's another Jewish view about our land, our environment. We really, are, it's, even though I know it's quoted somewhere in, in the uh, Bible that we give domain over all the earth, uh, we really don't believe that. We believe we're guests of the earth and that the earth is sacred. Um, so that would be the, one of the Jewish views on the environment. Uh, another Jewish view comes out of Jewish mysticism. The Jewish mystics uh, were very religious Jews, uh, and uh, they've probably been around as long as Jews have been around, but there's some famous mystics that uh, were living in the town of Safad. That's an ancient town in uh, Israel where Jews have lived continuously since the time of King David. And they became interested not only in the scriptures, which they were, they were Jews. They became interested in more uh, intimate relationships with, the God, with God. And they, be, they had some of their stories of their own. They studied an ancient text, which came back down through oral tradition. They studied the Old Testament or the Hebrew scriptures. But they also studied a text called the Zohar. And they actually compiled the Zohar. And these are the ancient mystics, the Kabbalists. They studied Kabbalah, and they, they came up with a little different view of, uh, of how the earth was formed. Now, I know you're all familiar with the uh, story in the Bible, as am I. It says, in the beginning, God created heaven and the earth. But for those of you that don't know Hebrew, and I don't know it that well, I probably know a little better than some of you, but that's probably not the correct translation. It's probably not in the beginning. This is debated among Jewish scholars it probably says in a beginning. 
not the beginning. So this gives leeway. Well, what, maybe there was more than one beginning. Maybe that's just a beginning. Maybe there's other beginnings. The mystics came up with another beginning, which they took from the Zohar. And I'd like to read it to you because it has a lot to do with later became the environmental movement, uh, at least among the Jews. Before creation, there was nothing but God. God was in all time and space, and God's light filled the cosmos. In order to make room for creation, God had to make some space where there was no God. So God took a deep breath to make room for the universe. In the space from which God had withdrawn, the heavens and earth were formed. But that meant God was nowhere in creation. So God exhaled some, God, some of God's light into the world. His light was contained in large vessels. But this light was too strong, too bright for the vessels that were meant to hold it. So they shattered. And the world was filled with tiny sparks of God's light. We call these tiny sparks divine sparks. And we as Jews believe that these sparks are spread throughout the entire earth. They are hidden, lost everywhere, and it's the responsibility of each Jew to gather up some of the sparks and restore them in their place. By doing this, creation can be restored to its original, perfect place. The act of restoring or repairing the world is called tikam olam, tikam repairing olam, the entire world. Tikam olam is identified uh, now with working for social justice, peace, freedom, equality, and the restoration of the environment. In Judaism, we can't really uh, separate the restoration of the environment from social justice, peace, uh, freedom. They they're all go together, and I'll give you an example of that in a little bit. So in recent times, to come along has meant things like writing le letters to Congress about greenhouse gases, toxic waste, supporting the movement, your movement, the Earth, Keeper, the Earth Keepers, which although was not started by uh, the Jewish movement, we certainly do support it. Recycling waste, pa uh, waste paper, bottles, and cans. And I'm really particular to this because my father was in, this, in the business. He was a recycler. And then uh, last of all, but not least, planting trees. We have a special holiday for that, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. Uh, Jews are very tied to the earth, which is an environmental thing right from the beginning. Judaism and Jewish holidays revolve around the sun, the moon, the weather, and the harvest. In Israel... We think of the rain, the rainy season, the dew, and the dryness. And then again, rain, and let it rain again, and dew and dryness. The story of the circling year. There are moments of dryness, sadness in the cycle, but beneath them there is a deeper joy in the circling of the year. So I'm just going to briefly talk about some Jewish holidays that are based, um, I'm going to talk mostly about Tu B'Shvat, which is a holiday for the trees. But first, I'd like to talk about four holidays based on the oval cycle. Uh, there are four seasons of the year, four moments of history, four stages of human life, four states of spiritual consciousness. The first I think you're familiar with is called Pesach or Passover. This, we just had Passover. It occurs right before Easter. Um, I believe that even the Christians believe that uh, Jesus was at the Seder meal or uh, a meal celebrating the exodus of the Jews. Uh, prior to his uh, crucifixion. So in the spring, we have the moment of birth and newness, the birth of the Jewish people, and of freedom. The flowers rise up against the winter. The Israelites rise up against Pharaoh. Our creativity first rises up against dullness and routine. We read an erotic love poem called the Song of Songs. Shavuot, that's called the, uh, the Feast of Weeks or the Pentecost. Seven weeks and one day after Pesach, at the on onset of summer, Shavuot is coming up pretty soon, another month, the peak of nature's glory. It reminds us of the peak, the moment at the peak of Sinai when the Jewish people met God face to face, and Jewish tradition called this a wedding ceremony to receive the Ten Commandments and the Torah.
msalaba Ukujua fedeha ya msalaba Ukujua garamah 